Ahead tonight, the ground rules on stem cell research expected to be laid in Parliament tomorrow. Also ahead, what National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson is saying about another NIB audit. And police search for suspects in the country's latest murder. The Bahamas Tonight starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Line. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keish Latterly. And I'm Candino Knowles. As always, it's good to have you with us. Topping the news tonight, Prime Minister Perry Christie is expected to address just how the government will police the controversial stem cell research industry and enforce the necessary regulations when Parliament meets tomorrow. Now, This comes on the heels of talks in Florida with University of Miami stem cell research experts about a potential partnership. Now, UM, which is known for its groundbreaking stem cell research program, has indicated its desire to have a much stronger relationship with the Bahamian government and, more importantly, to assist in police all stem cell research activities licensed to take place in the Bahamas. Additionally, Prime Minister Christie notes that some of the applications received from those who want to operate facilities here include some of the foremost scholars in the world. We are well advanced on it. We are um, ready for the legislation to receive passage through the House of Assembly and to go on to the um, Senate. And I think I should also add, with respect to the University of Miami, that we agreed to establish joint working parties. Um, that is, the Bahamas will put together a, a committee, the University of Miami committee, towards resolving how this partnership will work. When I speak, um, and if I am to speak, I should say, in Parliament, um, on Venice, depending on what I presume happens there, um, I will be able to expand um, on our approach um, to the law, the regulations, and to those applicants that are so impressive with respect to the level of professorial involvement. And by that I mean people who are acknowledged experts in the various fields of endeavor. Now, Prime Minister Christie says among those expected to be on that committee are the Chief Medical Officer and Dr. Glenn Benaby. He also hit out at Opposition Leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, who is pushing for the bill to be sent to the committee stage. Minnis is out to lunch. Um, Dr. Minnis has made some tactical errors in this. He describes himself as a man of science, and then throughout his entire speech, he contradicts that, that proposition that he is a man of science. And so, but I will be able to demonstrate that painstakingly on Wednesday if I'm allowed to speak. Well, it's been more than a month now since National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson revealed that government was conducting another audit of affairs at the National Insurance Board. Now, this after almost $900,000 was spent on a forensic investigation surrounding ousted Director Algernon Cargill and fired Chairman Gregory Moss. But he's not saying much about this latest probe. We don't want to see the, the disadvantage of releasing information bits and pieces is people don't get a full understanding of what's going on and the rationalization behind it. And so um, the idea now is to wait until we have a comprehensive position and then we release the information uh, to the public so they could get a full understanding and appreciate what it is that uh, we're doing. Last month, Rowena Bethel was appointed the new NIB director. And while Minister Gibson admits Mrs. Bethel has her hands full, he has every confidence in her ability to turn the country's safety net program around. She is the type of person who would bring focus, who would um, introduce um, more written policies. I think one of the biggest problems at NIB now is that um, they don't have a lot of specific written policy guidelines. Um, as to how they conduct uh, not only the operation of the core functions of NIB, but then on the construction side as well and the development side. Because you know, when NIB first started out, it was not anticipated that they would be doing all of these developments and constructions on behalf of the government. 
There's still no word on those Cuban detainees who were hoping to receive asylum. U.S. officials conducted interviews with the group, but Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell says there's still no information on what the next plan or the next phase of the plan will be. Well, they're still in prison, and uh, there's nothing changed since the weekend. The Americans had thought that an adjudication would be done by yesterday, and then they thought today, and they've now said it's not today. They're still awaiting the adjudication as to whether or not some of these individuals will be able to go into the states. The Bahamas Mortgage Corporation is getting set to launch its new housing project, which is expected to put more than 120 families in government-built homes in the next few years. BMC Chairman Alex Storr telling ZNS News today that the BMC has signed an agreement with the National Insurance Board to secure $60 million over six phases to fund the new project. In each phase, the corporation will receive $10 million towards funding for construction and other costs. Mr. Storr says the BMC is also about to hire a new coordinator and financial advisor who will be specifically assigned to help run that project. You know, that's the problem. There will never be enough houses for the demand that's out there, but it will go a long way in denting those persons on the waiting list and those persons that um, are looking for housing. So we, we hope that, that coupled with our private portfolio, we'll be able to make a large dent inside the demand out there. Now, the Department of Housing launched a new website, dohbahamas.com, where Mr. Storr says the BMC has already received about 400 new applications for housing. The 400 applications do not include other applications the corporation had previously received. The BMC chairman says the corporation is also willing and open to work with residents who may want to purchase a home that's already on the market. You treat the BMC as you would treat any other banking institution and you just come in with a job letter. We have an application that you can go online to bmcbahamas.com and fill out and bring in or you can just come in and fill out the application and we could let you know if you have a house in mind that you want to buy, you can come in with that price and we'll see if you qualify for that or you can just come in and we can let you know how much, what size house you can qualify for and then you can go and start the process of looking. In our first look at weather, we have a mid-level trough over the southeast Bahamas, which will move uh, westward over the next uh, couple of days, and that coupled with a stationary frontal boundary to the north will fire pockets of showers and thunderstorms through Thursday. But outside of our studios just now, we have mostly cloudy skies, temperature 82 degrees, relative humidity 79%. Your winds out of the south-southeast at 4 knots, barometric pressure 1,014.6 millibars, that's 29.96 inches, and it is steady. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family of islands, traveling in Bowdoin Podcast is still to come. Well, still ahead tonight, an Emancipation Day party turns deadly for one man. Details of the latest murder straight ahead. And celebrations continue for emancipation. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.